Brick Pits, good morning. Today we're going to dive into something different and unique. You've probably already watched it this past week with your parents if you register for this week's The Compassion Journey. But guess what? Today you get to get the exclusive on-demand viewing of our travel to learn about the story of our Fallbrook friend, Patience. So sit back with your families and enjoy worship this morning and let's dive into The Compassion Journey. Hello, and welcome to Compassion International's Journey Experience and the Village Movement. I am so excited you have decided to join our journey today. Have you ever heard the African proverb, it takes a village to raise a child? The Village Movement is the way of releasing children from global poverty holistically through the local church and communities of African descent. One child, one family, one community at a time. The children are living on less than $2 a day. Imagine living on less than $2 a day for food, rent, education, and medical care. As we spend time on our journey today, you are going to meet a 12-year-old girl named Patience from the African nation of Uganda. You are going to see how God has connected all of our lives together. We truly are, each of us, part of God's village working together to raise his children up and out of poverty. Now, as we get started, I want you to know the story you are about to experience is not just a story. Patience is a real girl, and this is her journey. Hello, welcome to Kiabando, my neighborhood in Uganda. It's nice to have someone to talk to. Not many people come to visit me anymore. People stay far away because of what happened to my family. They think we are cursed and they don't want to get sick too, even though everyone here is getting sick. You do know what I'm talking about, right? AIDS? Do they not have AIDS where you come from? Once you get it, you don't get better and nobody can figure out how to make it go away. Do you think it's cause we're poor? They do have this one medicine that helps a little, but it's too expensive. My dad was the first one to get it. He died so fast. Then my baby sister, my grandmother died too. I'm so scared that my mom will be next. She's all I have left. If we lose her, it'll just be me and my baby brothers. And how in the world will I take care of them? I'm just 12. Promise me, you'll be careful while you're here. I don't want you to get sick too. In many developing nations like Uganda, children in poverty are especially vulnerable to disease. They lack safe places to live, clean water to drink, the resources they need to prevent getting sick in the first place. Often, these little children have little access to medical care and even basic education about good hygiene practices. This can make the smallest sicknesses become deadly not to mention serious diseases that aren't easy to cure, like AIDS. In the U.S., significant medical advances mean we don't hear much about AIDS anymore. But in developing countries, diseases like AIDS are still extremely prevalent, mostly because the high cost of medicine is too far out of reach. Families like Patience's are forced to make very, very difficult decisions between spending their meager income on medicine or the basic necessities they need to survive. Remember, $2 a day. Thank you. 
I heard that in some places, kids can go to school every day for free. Is that true? I just can't imagine. I wish I could do that. Wear a clean uniform, have my own books, learn new things. I love learning. It makes me feel like I could do anything in the world one day. But I don't get to go very much. Here, in Keabando, you can't go to school unless you can pay. If you arrive without your fees, they won't even let you inside the building. It makes me feel like I'm left out of some really amazing things. Sometimes, I get sad about it. I know my mom works hard to save up as much as she can so I can go. She always says it's important for girls to go to school, but it's getting harder and harder for her to work, especially without my dad and no one to watch the boys. You know what? If I ever get the chance to go to school, I'll study harder than anyone in my class. When I grow up, I want to make a difference. I want to be able to help people People like my family and my neighbors in Keabando. I think they need someone to stick up for them. I know I can do it. I do. If I could just get to go. In most developing countries, an education is something only wealthy families can afford. It's not a given. It's something you hope for, especially for girls like Patience. Getting an education is your ticket out, the strongest opportunity to begin to break the cycle of poverty. With an education, you can find a steady job, provide for your family, avoid dangerous situations, and have the freedom to pursue your dreams. In Uganda, sending a child to school might cost $100 a year. I know that doesn't sound like much, but that cost is nearly impossible for a family in poverty to afford.
you ever felt hopeless, so sad that you don't know what to do next, or if you even wanted to try. I feel bad inside and scared. It's hard to describe. I think there's a word for it. Hopeless. When you feel scared and empty and nothing helps or makes it better, have you ever felt that way? When I was 12, something awful happened. The thing I was most afraid of. My mom died. She had AIDS too. I was left all alone with my baby brothers. How was I supposed to take care of us all alone? We ended up getting sent to my aunt's house. But she didn't want us. Still doesn't. There's not enough food for everyone or enough room at the house. She makes me work to earn my keep. I don't mind helping out, but this is different. I feel scared. I'm afraid of what might happen to us if I mess up or make her mad. But I need to be brave now for them. Most nights I have to stay up till one in the morning to try and get everything done. Then I wake up at four in the morning to do the laundry and make breakfast for my cousins. There's hardly enough for us to have any. And my aunt doesn't care. Sometimes she gets mad and starts yelling. Sometimes she hits me and I don't do anything wrong. I, I don't know what I did or what I could even do better. I'm trying so hard. Patience, who are you talking to? I know you are not finished. I'm sorry. I can't do anything right. Nothing. And if I ever did get to go to school, what would I do? It's not like I would have any time to study. I can barely get my chores done. Why did this happen to us? What did I do wrong? Is it my fault? Is God mad at me? I don't know what to do. Mommy, why did you have to go? What am I going to do? I guess it's true what everyone says about me and my family. Maybe we are cursed. Maybe that's all there is and all there's ever going to be. Children in poverty lack many basic needs. We've talked about food, clean water, and medical care, but what about someone to love you and keep you safe? Like a mom or a dad or a caregiver, someone who loves you and believes in you. You see, poverty isn't about not having things. It's about not having hope, not having the freedom to dream about the future because you're not sure there will even be one. Instead of thinking about what you want to be when you grow up, you're forced to spend your time trying to survive. Everything feels hopeless, especially when you're constantly told that nothing will ever change.
But there is a place where I don't feel so bad. It's a place that grown-ups call compassion at the church in my neighborhood. When I was first signed up, I was nervous, but just listen. It's a place for kids like me, and it's so much fun. There's plenty of food, the fancy kind, like chicken and vegetables. There are field trips to new places, and the nicest grown-ups I've ever met in my entire life. I get to see a doctor and get checkups, and they even can get medicine if I need it. And guess what? You'll never believe this, but I get to go to school every single day now, and never have to worry about the fees. I feel really safe here, like I belong. But best of all, I'm learning about someone named Jesus, how much he loves me, and no matter what my past looks like, he just sees my future. He has a big plan for my life. Now that I get to go to school, I'm thinking about that more and more. I wonder what I can become. Children in poverty often grow up hearing and believing terrible lies. Lies that say you're worthless, you don't matter, there's no use dreaming about your future because things will never change. Compassion partners with over 7,000 local churches in 25 countries around the world. These churches bring hope and new opportunities for children who once believed there was no hope, no future. These churches do much more than provide basic needs like education, medical care, and nutrition. They surround kids with people who are committed to caring for the whole child, keeping them safe, speaking words of truth, and sharing the love of Jesus. They provide a place where kids can be kids. They keep them dreaming of a better future and begin to break the cycle of poverty once and for all. There were so many grown-ups who took care of me at the church, but there's also someone else who is special to me. My sponsor, Diane. Diane lives far away in a place called Arizona, but I always feel so close to her. Some days, I can't wait to come to the church just to see if she sent me a letter. Letter days are the best ever. They call your name and you get to run up to the front of the room and open an envelope with your very own name on it. Everyone claps and cheers for you. Diane tells me the most wonderful things like, Patience, you are a precious child of God. Patience, I believe in you. Patience, I love you. God loves you too. Patience, there is a wonderful plan for your life. I keep every single letter she sends me, and they still make me feel so loved and important, even though I've read them all hundreds of times. I smile from ear to ear whenever I think about Diane. I can't wait to write back to her and tell her all about what I'm learning at school. Sometimes all it takes to change a life is someone to believe in you. When Patience started attending the Compassion Center, she wasn't just supported by pastors, teachers, doctors, and volunteers. She was connected with a loving, caring disciple through sponsorship who helped her see how loved and cherished she was, that she was strong, brave, and capable. Even though Patience and her sponsor, Diane, came from completely different worlds, they shared a special relationship that transformed both of their lives, one which proved that Diane could make a difference and that patients could hope for a happy and blessed future after all.
hapa kiwa yuko na watoto wake kiwa yuko na watoto wake Compassion helped patients find hope. And because of the Compassion program in that little church in Africa, she was able to start pursuing the dreams God placed in her heart as a young girl. I too have been blessed to disciple through sponsorship a little girl from Ghana just like patients. When I first decided to disciple Christabel, I didn't fully understand how God would use me to change her life. When I saw her beautiful face and read her story, I was excited to be a blessing, knowing she's receiving food, medical care, education, and so much love through my letters to her and through the Compassion Program. I am watching Christabel's life change right before my eyes. Now let's finish seeing just how Patience's story turns out. My name is Patience Namanya. I was born right here in the slums of Kampala, Uganda. I'm the sole survivor of my family. My story is difficult, but my story also has hope. It's why I fight. It's why I advocate. It's why when I look into the eyes of a child, I don't see the end. I see a new beginning. Today, I'm asking you to do the same. When you sponsor a child through compassion, you make it possible for them to reach their full potential with nutritious food, medical care, life skills, and education. You give them the opportunity to experience the love of Christ through the local church. Most of all, you give them hope. To this day, my sponsor, Diane, and I still share a deep connection. She is my family, my greatest champion and supporter. I hope you enjoyed taking part in this journey experience with us. I want to thank you for being a church that cares about children just like patients. Through Compassion's Village Movement, your church is literally making disciples of Jesus Christ and releasing children out of poverty in Jesus' name. As we conclude our time here together, let me encourage you that your prayers, your letters of encouragement, and your church's faithful support are truly planting seeds of hope in the lives of many children. God bless you, and again, thank you. have an attitude of gratitude, to show thanks to those who have helped you. And not only have we been in a help, but there has been so many people that have been a help to us. Can you think of anyone, anyone that has been the hugest of help to you? <laughs> I know, right? 
all of those names that you've listed, we need to have an attitude of gratitude to them. So we're thankful for our Fallbrook friends at Compassion International for being with us today and for sharing the truth about what happens all around the world and giving us a different perspective. We're also thankful for the things that we have because we know that many do not have the same things as we do. So as we enter into small group today, I want you to remember how we can form the habit, the habit to have an attitude of gratitude. What's for dinner? We hope connection, communication, and discipleship. This Thanksgiving, Brook Kids wants to help you make family dinners meaningful. Sign up to learn more and get some meaningful grub delivered to your front porch this month. Email the Brook Kids at fallbrookchurch.org for more information. Christmas is around the corner, and we are already in the holiday spirit. Birth through fifth grade, you got a carol to sing? Well, we want to hear you. Join the Brook Kids Jingle Jam Virtual Choir today as we ramp up to celebrate Jesus this season. Visit the Brook Kids page on the church website to join the virtual choir today.